Okay, I'm going to make a quick video this morning um, concerning the TAG mill and the TAG mill motor, okay? Um, there's been some problems, uh, not really problems, it's, it, the motor's never shut off on me or anything, but the motor gets really, really hot. And um, I know this is normal, uh, I have a friend that's got the same motor on a lathe, which I also have and um, it, it gets hot. It even cuts out on him sometimes. So um, the, the thermal circuit takes over and um, it shuts down. Anyway, um, so I'm going to start a video um, about an idea that I had to try to um, cut down on the heat problem because it concerns me. When I do long CNC runs, I shut the mill down about every hour and let the motor cool off. Um, I don't know how hot it gets. Uh, I recently purchased a um, infrared thermal thermometer to check that, but I uh, haven't had a chance to use it yet. I did a sh very short run for this little heatsink project that I'm going to talk about today, and um, I noticed that the motor was hot to the touch and it was actually only 120 degrees. So I think that's probably acceptable. And that was running the motor about 40, 35 or 40 minutes. So, um, and doing very light cut, cutting work. So anyway, with that said, um, we're gonna get, get after it. Um, I, I purchased a, a item from a local company here, and I'll explain that and put the information down in the uh, description so you'll know what that is and uh, basically I built this thing and so we're just going to talk about it today. It's, it's actually just, only, there's only a several, several parts that I fabricated so and they're, they're really basically no brainer, just a, a straight, straight um, machining situation so nothing really to show on camera or video. So anyway, um, uh, here's the motor I'm talking about, right? And what I've decided to do is put a heat sink on it and a couple of fans. So that said, um, and I, you know, I'll tell you right now, I unboxed the heat sink already and I've already tried it. It does snap onto the motor just like it should. And I'll show you that um, at the end of the video. So with that, uh, I'm going to move the camera over to my little workmate over here and um, and show you what I've done and um, you can make make your own judgment as to whether or not this is a, uh, a good fix or not. Um, I, I may make a, a, a another video later on and um, tell you what I found out with the uh, infrared thermometer but um, I'm fairly convinced that this is going to help somewhat um, keep the motor cooler um, during the hot summer months, uh, it does seem to get hotter, <laughs> and during long runs. So, uh, like I say, in the past I've shut it down every hour, and it, it's, it feels pretty darn hot. I, I'm, I can only hold my hand on it for a few seconds. So, uh, there is absolutely no ventilation on this motor. So, um, there has to be something to dissipate the heat. So with that, I'm going to move the camera and we'll talk about what I've done and um, so we'll go from there. Okay, I'm over at the workmate and um, so this, this is what I've done here and I know you can't see it and I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in on it. Um, uh, but I'll tell you what it consists of, it consists of a a wall type transformer just plug it in 12 volts okay and I, I purchased this a while back for a um, uh, an RPM, RPM sensor that I never actually built so um, <laughs> all the parts are sitting over here in a box so I will eventually get around to that but um, anyway I, I grabbed this out of the box of parts that I bought for that and this seems to work really good. It seems to be no problem. Um, I just, I, I, I don't know where I purchased this because it's been a couple of years ago. But um, 
was very inexpensive on eBay or someplace. So these things are, I don't know, five or six, seven dollars. So they're not ex they're not expensive. Um, the other thing I purchased for this project was uh, two small fan motors here, and I'll put that down in the description. But uh, you can buy those anywhere. Uh, they're very common. Um, they put these little fan motors on these uh, radio control RC projects with heat sinks. And the other thing I purchased was a, a heat sink itself. This heat sink is, is um, uh, made for a sure a sure flow a sure flow motor. Um, they're small pump motors. Um, they're used for different purposes. And when you run them continuously, um, they sell a heat sink for it. So it, the motor, the, the, the sure flow motor, sure flow motor was exactly three inch diameter. And also the uh, tag motor was a three inch diameter. And this, uh, so let me, let me zoom in on these parts and uh, I'll explain them to you. Okay. And show you what I've done. Well, there you go. Hopefully that's close enough. Um, now I'm out of the picture. So here's the heat sink. It's three inches in diameter, internal diameter. It's got three sets of fins on it. And it's exactly three inches long. Now, that's just about exactly the right size lengthwise for the Shearline motor. So, like I say, I'll put the information down in the description on this. This is not a real expensive item. Uh, you can find it for $14 up to $20. There's a bunch of places that's, that sell this because they sell the Sure Flow, sure flow Motor. <laughs> okay. Okay, anyway, uh, with that, um, and uh, I've already explained that I, that I purchased this, this wall transformer here uh, to power this thing. So the only thing that I actually did was build this little part here and this is really a simple little part it's just a piece of eighth inch aluminum is all it is and I cut it out with CNC and I just it it just basically fits on the fins here and the only other thing I did was I made I had some one inch by sixteenth inch brass that I cut a couple pieces off of and I bent them at an acute angle so they would these 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 port these pieces here would fit into the fins and this would slide up and down and I, I could remove it if I wanted to that's it that's all I did uh, basically as simple as that and um, I just bent these pieces in the vise I just cut this aluminum out on on CNC now the only thing I did, and you can't see it on camera, I cut two holes in this piece of aluminum, plus all the holes for the the mounting holes for the fans, of which there's eight, and those are like um, uh, three millimeters or something, around an eighth of an inch, and I cut a recess into this piece of aluminum here, just uh, thirty thousandths deep, uh, so it would locate these pieces right here. And what I did was, is I epoxied, used five minute epoxy, and I epoxied these little brass uh, angular pieces onto the aluminum. That made it easy to align and drill these four holes here. So that's the only reason I did that. Uh, the whole thing is actually held together with these eight screws right here. So that's it. And this thing, basically just well I, you got to get it right but it slides onto here if I, if I can see what I'm doing here it fits exactly so, um, so this thing just slides on here like this and it slides back and forth it's a it's a fairly good fit so 
I've got these little brass pieces pulled up to where they're actually rubbing against the the fin here and they they're a little bit shorter than the than the groove so so that the whole thing slides and it doesn't bind or anything now what I plan to do is I'm not going to actually permanently clamp this to the heat sink it fits good it doesn't move so what I'm going to do is just put a I have some long tie wraps I'm just going to put a tie wrap uh, below it once it goes on to the mill motor and uh, that will keep it in place it, it won't drop down any further so that's what I plan to do so we'll see how that works I haven't tried that yet so I have some long tie wraps in the house so I'm gonna move the camera over to the mill motor we're gonna snap this on so you can see how it fits and we're gonna plug in the transformer and I've got these fans on exhaust so you can turn them over if you want they'll blow air onto the heat sink but right now I've got them set for exhaust so they'll they suck air through the through this heat sink and and over the motor so I don't know which way it's gonna work best but uh, that said that's what I've done at this point so with further testing I might change that I don't know anyway let me move the camera back over to the mill and I'll, I'll um, I'll snap this heat sink onto the motor and you'll see how good it fits. I mean it fits like a glove. And when you snap it on, you it has to be a, it has to be where you want it because it doesn't move around very easily after that. So you need to snap it around, but you can take it off and on. It is it is a little bit um, it's not hard, but it takes a little bit of force to get it on and off because it it snaps. So the this 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 area down here is smaller than three inches. So you, it has to spread a little bit, and it doesn't spread. I mean, I can't spread it like this, but it does spread when you snap it on. So anyway, with that information, let me uh, move the camera back over to the mill motor, and uh, we'll take a look at it. Okay, I'm back over to the mill motor now, and I'm going to snap this on. Now, I don't exactly know how I'm going to do this to stay out of the way of the camera, but um, we'll see here. So here, here's the unit in its entirety, and I this this slides up and down, so that's going to be a little bit of a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it. Um, let's see, can you see? Okay, so I'm going to hold it up up a ways. Okay, I'm going to snap it on here. Okay, there it goes. And um, so I, you know, I don't exactly know how I'm going to lo locate it, but uh, let me let me get this transformer set up here. Well, I'm going to be in your way. I know. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so there's the transformers plugged in. So let me. Um, yeah, let me make sure the wiring's out of the way. So, okay, and it's just right now, it's you can see it slides up and down quite easily. So, really, you know, what I should do is probably raise it up up to the top, and then wrap the tie wrap around here so it can't slide down. That's all I plan to do at this point. So, it's very simple. Uh, I don't have the tie wrap out here, so um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It may just fall down here, so that won't be good. Um, so let me uh, let me let's let's see. Let me let me zoom in on it. Okay. I have to walk around here. A lot of stuff in the way. Oh. Okay, there it is. And I've zoomed in on it. So you can see clearly. Now maybe I better... Okay, let me zoom one more time. And um, well, maybe it'll pick up the fan better. Although I don't know. 
Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go over there and and um, fire up the fans. I got a switch uh, up here on the bench, so I can fire those up. Okay, they're fired up. They're blowing air. Not a lot of air. I guess you could put a larger fan on it. Let's see. I, I don't know if I can zoom in on those any further or not. Pretty hard to see that they are running. Okay. It's a very quiet. So with that, um, that's basically all I wanted to show you here. Um, I see they've 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 slid down, so we do need the tie wrap on there to hold it. But uh, that said, that'll that that'll I'll conclude this video at that. You 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 get the idea. And um, if you if you want any for any more information, just put it in the comments, and I'll try to answer any questions. But it's a pretty simple build. I mean, it doesn't take doesn't take much to figure it out. Oh. So. With that, I'll call off. Hope somebody gets something out of this. If you got a Shearline motor, I guarantee it's getting hot, um, depending on how much you run it.